Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video in the Mindstop Minecraft development series. In this video, I'm going to teach you guys how to build your server to a jar file. Now, up to this point, we've learned how to make a server, how to do event listeners, how to do commands. Now, I'm going to teach you guys how to actually make it so that you can build your server to a jar file. And all that simply means is taking your program and making it into a file that you can run uh, just like any file on your computer, okay? Because currently, we run the server by running it through our IDE. And that's just how we run it and test it out and all that fun stuff. But using that to actually run a server that people are going to be playing on is kind of unrealistic, right? It would be nice if we could build a THR file so that we could store it somewhere safe and run the server whenever we want to. So to do this, we're going to rely on the Mindstomp documentation. They actually have information on how to do this using Gradle. So we're going to go to your first server. I have a link for this in the description below so you can find it more easily. So scroll down to the building the server jar section. The documentation uses Gradle, so we just need to select which type of Gradle project we created with Groovy or with Colin. I used Colin, so I'm going to select that for both of these here, okay? So we want to take this piece of code here, this ID version 8.3.0. This is just a Gradle plugin that allows you to, you know, do what we're trying to do, which is build our code into a jar file. So take that, copy it. Then go back to your code and then find the build.gradle.kts file or whatever Gradle file that you have. And then go to the very top here. That's where I have mine. You want to find the plugin section and just add this as a plugin. So just add that and then click the Gradle reload button here. And this will make sure to import that plugin for you. And then come back to the documentation here. And this is all you need to get started. But to actually make it so that the jar file is runnable and all that stuff, you want to add all these other settings as well, okay? So we just want to copy this stuff here, starting from Java all the way down to tasks. Just copy this part. And then we're going to go back to our thing here and just paste it at the bottom, okay? So this is just basically telling it, as it says, that the minimum version of Java is Java 21. The jar file needs something called a manifest, which is like the information that it uses to be able to run it and we want to point it towards where we can find the main class so mine if you look on the left here is main.java and then right here we have me.cody simpson which is the root package of our project so that's what it's going to be so me.cody simpson and then within that we have the main class that has our main method so whatever class you have that has the main method make sure you add that to the end of this, so main in my case. Something else that you can do if you want to is just remove this test stuff. We don't really care about unit testing. Um, I'm just gonna get rid of all that. We don't need any of that. And yeah, that should be good. So make sure you click the button up here again to load all the changes. So now to actually build a jar file, go to the right here and find the Gradle button. It's a little elephant. Click that, then open tasks, and then go to shadow, and then shadow jar. This is the one that you wanna run here. So go ahead and right click it and do run, and now that will run it and do all the stuff, it'll compile all your code into a jar file that you can use, okay? So it says it's done already, so let's go ahead and check it out. So you can find it by going to build, open that up, then go to libs, and here we go. So we get my first server 1.0 snapshot, that's the name of our jar file. So 1.0 snapshot is corresponding to the version that you're setting here in this Gradle file here. So anytime you update your plugin or something like that, if you want to have different versions, you can just change it here and it will be reflected in the jar file once you build it, okay? So just right click this and do open in Explorer and this will open in your file explorer. So now you can actually access it and you can put it somewhere safe or send it to somebody else or whatever you want to do with it. So to be able to run this file now, you can just use a terminal command. So, so just right click here and do open in terminal or just open a terminal and move it to this location here. And first of all, let's check the version. We wanna make sure that our Java version is at least Java 21 because that's the version that we selected. If you look in these Gradle settings again, you can see that we set Java version 21. So that is the version of Java that this program was built in. So that's the minimum version that you need, okay? So just make sure you check the version of Java that you currently have set. Um, because if you don't have at least 21, it won't work, okay? Very often you'll be developing with a certain version of Java like Java 21, but then when you try running it in a terminal, it won't work because um, stuff with environmental variables. You just need to make sure that you have the correct stuff set. One easy way that you can sort of mitigate this, if you just go to Google and search Java JDK, I don't know why my fonts messed up, don't worry about that, but just search Java JDK, go to the uh, Oracle website, and just go ahead and download the latest version of Java, the JDK. So in this case, for me, it's Java 22 at the time of recording here. Just click that and then go to Windows or whatever machine you're using and install it. And that should automatically install the, the correct stuff for you and also set the environmental variable. After you do that, make sure that you close whatever terminal you have and reopen a new one so that it resets and then check the version again by running the same command, okay? If for some reason it still doesn't show the correct version that you just installed, then you need to fix the environmental variables and there's it's not too hard, just look up how to do that, okay? I have videos on that as well. 
But anyways, with that said, after you've made sure that you have at least Java 21, you can now run this by doing Java dash jar, and then the actual file name, which is my first server, and then press enter. And boom, there we go. So we're getting the logging messages, starting Mindstorm server, and Mindstorm server started successfully. So that's a good sign. So if we join the server now, it works. Sweet, just like before, same way if we you know run it within our IDE, or if we just run the jar file, we now have a Minecraft server running, which is really cool. The benefit now is that you can run this anywhere, anytime, on any machine. You just have to make sure that you have this jar file. You can send it to a Linux server, for example, and then if that Linux server has Java 21, it can run it. Uh, you know, pretty cool stuff. Once you have your server running and you want to stop it, you can terminate it by doing Control C. That will just force close it pretty much. And then you can close this. And real quick, I want to show you guys how to make a very simple little script that you can use to run your server just by double clicking so that you don't have to open the terminal every single time. So just right click here and do new uh, text document or whatever and just call it start underscore server or whatever you want to call it. But just make sure that you change the extension to B A T bat. Okay. And then press enter and then click yes to change it. And now this is a Windows batch file or just a script that we can run. Okay. And something else we'll do is we'll just rename this jar file to make it easier to reference. So just right click, um, rename, we'll call it server.jar, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter. And now we're going to right click our new bat file and do open in notepad or edit in notepad. And here we just put our command that we have. So java dash jar server.jar. And then control S to save that, close it. And now to run the server, all you got to do is double click this bat file and it opens up in a terminal for you. There we go. So it's already started it's super fast because it's mindstorm. We can join and boom, there we go. We're now on the server. Sweet. I was editing the video. I just want to add something else real quick. I showed you guys how to run this jar file within the build folder that was generated when we built this jar file uh, just within our projects folder. Um, but this is not something that you want to do. This is just, you know, for the tutorial. I also included the bat file there. Just make sure that you move this jar file into a safe place where you want your Minecraft server to be. Um, so you know where it's always going to be that way it doesn't get overridden or you don't lose it Okay, I just wanted to make that clear something else that you can do is choose how much memory you want to allocate to this Java program And you're running it just so that you can make sure it has enough memory to do its job and run smoothly It's probably not gonna be an issue that you notice with a Mindstorm server when you're first developing it because it's so lightweight but um, as your server gets bigger and as more people join in and stuff like that, you're going to want to worry about how much memory it has. But anyways, it's just something that you should care about. So to customize the amount of memory for the java dash jar command when you're running a jar file, you can add on arguments to it. So you can do dash xms. And then for example, you could do something like 512m. And all this is saying is that whenever you start running this jar file here, initially allocate 512 megabytes of memory to this program, okay? This is your computer's RAM. And then you could also set the maximum amount of memory so it doesn't take too much on your computer. So you can do XMX, and then you can give it a size. You can do megabytes, or you can do gigabytes if you want. So let's say you want it to take a max of only two gigabytes. You can specify that. So what this will do when you run it is initially allocate 512 megabytes of memory of RAM to your server's program. And then if your server needs more memory, you can get it all the way up until two gigabytes. Okay. You can customize this number to be whatever you want. Just make sure that you don't set it too high because computers only have so much RAM. For example, my computer only has 32 gigabytes, but laptops and stuff like that could have as low as eight gigabytes or smaller, maybe four gigabytes. So just be careful. Okay. A Mindstorm server should not even need that much memory to begin with. So Control S to save those changes, and then when you boot up your server, oops, I just booted up a second server. As you can see, it says it's already in use, so cancel that one. Make sure you close the one that's already running to restart it, and now we can open this again, and boom, now our server has started. Hopefully you guys learned something in this video. You should now know how to build your server program into a jar file, and then you should also know how to make a simple you know, Windows script to be able to run it really easily whenever you want to, okay? Hopefully this helps. So that's it for this video, everybody. I really hope you learned something new. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. And if you wanna see more, hit that subscribe button. Make sure to also check the description below for important links to code and other resources, but also really important, join our Discord. We have a big community of over 5,000 programmers, and it's a place where you can find new friends or get help on any code that you're stuck on. If you wanna support what I do on this channel, please consider hitting the join button below. And this will allow you to support my channel for as low as $1 a month, but there are different tiers to choose from if you want to. For anyone that becomes a member on my channel, you get a special rank on my Discord server, early access to new videos and you can just see yourself on the screen right now so if that sounds cool to you feel free to join if you don't want to that's fine if you can't that's okay too i really just appreciate you watching the video anyway thank you so much and that's it peace